Ross River virus is a small encapsulated single-strand RNA alpha virus endemic to Australia, Papua New Guinea and other islands in the South Pacific. It is responsible for a type of mosquito-borne non-lethal but debilitating tropical disease known as Ross River fever, previously termed epidemic polyarthritis. The virus is suspected to be enzootic in populations of various native Australian mammals and has been found on occasion in horses. Classification and Morphology Taxonomically, Ross River virus belongs to the virus genus Alpha virus, which is part of the family Togaviridae. The Alpha viruses are a group of small enveloped single strand positive sense RNA viruses. RRV belongs to a subgroup of Old World Alpha viruses and is considered closely related to Sajnayama virus. The variants themselves contain the genome in a protein capsid 700 day in diameter. They are characterized by the presence of two glycoproteins embedded as trimeric dimers in a host-derived lipid envelope. Because RRV is transmitted by mosquitoes, it is considered an arbovirus, a non-taxonomic term for viruses borne by arthropod vectors. History in 1928, an outbreak of acute febrile arthritis was recorded in Narandra at Hay in New South Wales, Australia. In 1943, several outbreaks of arthralgia and arthritis were described in the Northern Territory, Queensland and the Shouten Islands, off the northern coast of Papua New Guinea. The name epidemic polyarthritis was coined for this disease. In 1956, an epidemic occurred in the Murray Valley which was compared to acute viral polyarthritis caused by chikungunya virus. The Australian disease seemed to progress in milder fashion. In 1956, serological testing suggested an unknown new species of alpha virus was the likely culprit. In 1959, a new alpha virus was identified in mosquito samples trapped near Ross River, near Townsville, Queensland, Australia. Further serological testing showed that patients who had suffered epidemic polyarthritis in Queensland had antibodies to the virus. The new virus was named Ross River virus, and the disease Ross River fever. The virus itself was first isolated in 1972 using suckling mice. It was found that RRV isolated from human serum could kill mice. However, the serum containing the virus that was used had come from an Aboriginal boy from Edward River, North Queensland. The child had a fever and a rash but no arthritis making the link between RRV and Ross River fever less than concrete. The largest ever outbreak of the virus was in 1979-1980 and occurred in the Western Pacific. The outbreak involved the islands of Fiji, Samoa, the Cook Islands, and New Caledonia. However, RRV was later isolated in humans following a series of epidemic polyarthritis outbreaks in Fiji, Samoa and the Cook Islands during 1979. RRV was isolated in an Australian patient suffering from Ross River fever in 1985. In 2010, the Ross River virus was found to have made its way to the Ound area in Pune, India and spread to other parts of the city. A tourist to Australia probably returned infected with the virus. The RRV infection is characterized by very high fever, pain in the joints, loss of appetite and weakness. Hydration by sufficient fluid intake is recommended to ensure that the fever does not rise to very dangerous levels. It is recommended that the doctor be consulted immediately as regular paracetamol gives only temporary reprieve from the fever. Ecology In rural and regional areas of Australia, 
The continued prevalence of Ross River virus is thought to be supported by natural reservoirs such as large marsupial mammals. Antibodies to Ross River virus have been found in a wide variety of placental and marsupial mammals, and also in a few bird species. It is not presently known what reservoir hosts support Ross River virus in metropolitan areas such as Brisbane. The southern salt marsh mosquito, which is known to carry the Ross River virus, was discovered in Napier, New Zealand, in 1998. Due to an 11 year program by the New Zealand Ministry of Health and later the Ministry of Agriculture and AMP Fisheries, the species was declared completely or eradicated from New Zealand in July 2010. As of September 2006, there has never been a report of a case of Ross River virus acquired within New Zealand. Separate mosquito species may act as vector, widespread across areas and seasonal, geographical locations. In southern and northern regions, the Aedes group of the main RV carriers. However, inland the Culex anulirostris is the main carrier with Aedes mosquitoes becoming active during wet seasons. Western Australia, due to the expansion and housing demand in the southwest of Western Australia, residential development is occurring closer to wetlands despite that the ecosystem is known for mosquito breeding, particularly in the Peel region where living near water is desirable for aesthetic value. Over the decade of June 2011-2012 the population increased by 44,000 residents averaging a rate of 4.5% per annum. In June 2013 the Peel region accounted for approximately 5% of the state's population and predicted to account for around 6.7% of Western Australia's population by 2031. A study comparing the risk of contracting Ross River virus and the distance of the dwellings from muddy lakes. The reports showed within a 1 km buffer zone there were approximately 1550 mosquitoes in traps per night with 89% of them being a camp terinkus decreasing to approximately 450 mosquitoes with 57% a Camp Terinkus at the 6 km buffer zone. The study suggests that there is a significantly higher risk of contracting a RV when living closer to muddy lakes. However, there was a rise in the 2 km buffer zone of 3,700 mosquitoes with 94% A. Camp Terinkus. A similar trend in the study, same study conducted in the Peel region, resulting in less mosquitoes the further away the buffer distance. In 1995-96 Lesh Nolt and Cable Busselton were affected by an outbreak of 524 cases of RV disease. Although this occurred around a decade ago, the data analyzed the total RV cases per 1,000 persons for each 500 meters buffer zone. This shows an elevated risk of contracting the disease if living in close close proximity to the Leshnol testuary, within 2 km being the strongest disease risk gradient. Evidence shows that there is a strong correlation between contracting a RV when living in close proximity to wetlands in the southwest of Western Australia. However, due to continuous growth and development of residential areas around these wetlands it is expected that problems with our RV disease will occur. Risks There are several factors that can contribute to an individual's risk for Ross River virus in Australia. These risks were trialled in a study conducted in tropical Australia which illustrate that factors such as camping, light-coloured clothing, exposure to certain flora and fauna and specific protective mechanisms are able to increase or decrease the likelihood of contracting the virus. By increasing the frequency of camping the individual's risk increases eightfold, suggesting that an increased exposure to wildlife increases risk.
This is shown by the narrow 95% confidence interval of 1.07 to 4.35 within the study. For example, an individual's exposure to kangaroos, wallabies and bromeliad plants also increase risk, suggesting that they are reservoirs for infection, breeding sites from mosquitoes and potential vectors of the virus. Although these areas show a higher risk from the virus human should still enjoy the wildlife but consider that preventive mechanisms as increasingly important while camping. Prevention Ross River virus can be easily prevented through small behavioral mechanisms which should be of high importance in tropical areas and during participation of outdoor activities. Firstly, insect repellent should be rigorously used as to prevent bites from insects that specifically include mosquitoes which are vectors that carry the disease. A study in tropical Australia shows a very narrow 95% confidence interval of 0.20 to 1.00 for a decrease in Ross River virus risk as a result of increased use of insect repellent, suggesting a strong correlation between the two. Following it, burning citronella candles are based on the same principle, that it repels insects that are vectors of the virus. Burning such candles also show a strong correlation with decreased Ross River virus risk shown in the same study with a narrow 95% confidence, interval of 0.10 to 0.7. Secondly, wearing light-colored clothing decreases the risk of Ross River virus threefold. This is again based on the repelling of vectors such as mosquitoes through the use of bright colors. Lastly, high-risk areas should be minimized by mechanisms of prevention that are applied within households. For example, screens should be fitted to windows and doors to prevent entry of insects carrying the virus and potential breeding areas such as open water. Containers of water holding plants should be removed. Therefore, specific climatic environments should be assessed for high risk factors and the appropriate precautions should be taken in response. Lab Research the study of RRV has been recently facilitated by a mouse model. Inbred mice infected with RRV develop hind limb arthritis, arthralgia. The disease in mice, similar to humans, is characterized by an inflammatory infiltrate including macrophages which are immunopathogenic and exacerbate disease. Furthermore, recent data indicate that the serum component, C3, directly contributes to disease since mice deficient in the C3 protein do not suffer from severe disease following infection. Symptoms the Ross River virus can cause multiple symptoms on someone who is infected, the most common being arthritis or joint pain. Other symptoms include a rash on the limbs of the body, which often occurs roughly 10 days after arthritis begins. Lymph nodes may enlarge most commonly in the armpits or groin region, and rarely a feeling of pins and needles in the person's hands and feet but only occurs in a small amount of people. The symptoms of Ross River virus are important to recognize for early diagnosis and therefore early treatment. Symptoms have been illustrated in a case report of an infected Thuringian traveler returning from southeast Australia. This case showed flu-like symptoms that include fever, chills, headache and pains in the body. Additionally, joint pain arose in which some joint Joints become swollen and joint stiffness was particularly noticeable. A clinical examination of the infected individual shows a significant decrease of specific antibodies despite the normal blood count levels. A rash is a good indication that is likely to occur but usually disappears after 10 days. The symptoms of Ross River virus are important to be aware of so that early treatment can be administered before the virus worsens. The time between catching the disease and experiencing symptoms is 
is anywhere between three days to three weeks. Usually it takes about one to two weeks. A person can be tested for the Ross River virus by a blood test. Other illnesses may need to be excluded before diagnosis. Diagnosis. Testing for Ross River virus should occur in patients who are experiencing acute polyarthritis, tiredness and or rashes with a history of travel within areas prone to infection from the virus. Serology is the appropriate manner by which to diagnose Ross River virus. Within seven days of infection, the virus produces immunoglobulin M and is a presumptive positive diagnosis. IgM may persist for months or even years and therefore false positives may be triggered by Barma forest virus, rubella, Q fever or rheumatoid factor. To completely test for Ross River virus, a second serology test must be conducted 10 to 14 days after the first. The patient may then be declared positive for Ross River virus infection if there is a four-fold increase of IgM antibody count. Ross River Fever Ross River Fever is also known as Ross River Virus Infection or Ross River Virus Disease. The Ross River Virus is named after the Ross River in Townsville, which is the place where it was first identified. Ross River Fever is the most common mosquito-borne disease in Australia, and nearly 5,000 people are reported to be infected with the virus each year.